Hey guys, it's Todd with your first monthly Inner Circle video. And before I get into the video stuff, I want to just give you guys, since this is the first time, kind of a rundown on how this whole process is going to work. Basically, I'm putting out a video for you guys um, today, uh, Tuesday, and I want you guys to go ahead and watch it, uh, digest it, learn from it, get whatever questions you have about it, and then I'll be back tomorrow with a live webinar where you guys can actually come and ask me those questions and I'll give you actually answers in real time. Um, for those of you who aren't able to be on the webinar, we'll also record it and put that out later. Um, obviously, you won't have the chance to ask the questions if you're not there, but at least you can see what questions were asked and see the responses. Hopefully, by having this continual live interaction and, and by making an interactive program, um, we'll be able to make the video process even more effective for you guys. Um, specifically, I'm going to try and take questions that are related to the topic of the video first tomorrow, but I will stay on and take other questions, just general interest, general sticking points. I know I got a lot of questions um, from you guys on the forum, which I really appreciate. Um, I tried to touch on some of them sort of obliquely in the topic that I'm, that I'm doing, and I'm more than willing to take those questions separately as well, and I'll also maybe use those as topics for future videos that I'll put out. Um, but anyway, I want to encourage you guys to watch the video, enjoy it, and try and come back tomorrow and ask me questions. And if you can't, um, go ahead and uh, watch the video and get what you can, watch tomorrow's video as well, get what you can from it and uh, learn as much as you can. Also recognize that I am here as a resource for you guys as the head of Inner Circle. You guys are my sort of select few favored students, people. Um, so recognize that you guys can also uh, send me questions in general uh, through the Inner Circle forums and um, general inner circle questions you can send me at Todd at or um, private message me on RST Nation. Um, anyway, I want to help you guys out as much as I can. Feel free to watch the videos and also feel free to um, make suggestions, ask lots of questions and comment on the videos uh, so that I can know how to best provide what you guys really, really want. Um, the video I shot, I actually just shot it earlier this morning. Uh, it's actually a really interesting video. It's a concept that's kind of been rattling around in my head for a while. Hopefully it'll be really useful and, and, and effective for you guys in terms of like learning how to game better and learning how to learn game better. It's kind of an eventful video as you'll see. I had the camera blow over. I thought I lost my camera which is pretty terrifying for me. And I also had a nice little um, moment with the, this homeless guy who wanted his 15 minutes of fame. But uh, anyway, it's a good video. Uh, good content, and I will be back with you guys tomorrow to actually chat with you guys, and you can uh, have some uh, live dialogue and get your questions answered. Till tomorrow. Hey, this is Todd from Real Social Dynamics and RSD Inner Circle. I'm here on a blustery day in Boston, and the concept I want to bring to you guys for the first monthly Inner Circle video is a concept I call social currency. Social currency is a really simple concept that most of you probably actually understand intuitively already but it has a lot of really interesting applications and by understanding it you will be able to um, analyze and dissect your game in ways that you might not otherwise have been able. So uh, hopefully it'll be really helpful to you guys and hopefully it will help you guys with the most important part of game to me which is the process of game, the process of being able to analyze your own game, figure out where you're doing well, figure out where you're doing poorly and to make improvements on your own because if you get that process right you get game right. So without further ado, social currency basically is the idea that at any point in a relationship you've built up a certain amount of both value and comfort within the, the context of the relationship between two people that essentially allows you to either get away with or not get away with certain things. Probably the best illustration of this concept comes up in text messaging. Imagine that you met a girl and you had sort of a brief interaction got the number but you don't really know her that well she doesn't really know you that well now if on your first text message you ask for a lot you ask for a lot of compliance for example let's meet up at Tuesday at 7 o'clock at XYZ location you're probably not gonna get a yes in fact you're most likely not even gonna get a response back because you put so much pressure on that one particular outcome and you've asked for so much while giving so little that you're very unlikely to get a positive response All right contrast that to um, something cute like say you send like a funny picture of something you saw the other day and just like you know a quick a quick pleasant greeting or a nice to meet you or something like that now there's two things that happen with that second text message first of all you're actually offering value you're giving something unique and interesting that she couldn't have gotten somewhere else so you're actually conveying your personality you're offering value you're making it creative you're making it interesting you're actually building social currency but also you're not asking for anything. You're not asking for a specific meetup. You're not asking for a specific time, place, date. So you're also not trying to tap into whatever social currency you, you have already built or have not already built. So that's why you're more likely to get a much more positive reaction 
to the second situation, the second text scenario, than to the first one. In fact, with texting in particular, I always think of it in terms of that. I think of it in terms of like, I text to build social currency, I text to build that precedent that she's complied, I text to build the idea in her mind that when she sees something from me it'll be fun, so that she thinks that when we hang out it will also be fun, enjoyable, non-threatening, non-awkward. So that's what I'm trying to build up in that particular case. So again, you have to have the social currency before you can spend it. Um, the other interesting paradoxical thing, which I'll actually talk about probably at the end of this video, is that whenever you're asking for something, you're spending social currency. However, if that thing is granted, now you have a different level of social currency. Take the text message example again. For example, if you did send that highly invested um, social currency spending text of, you know, let's meet up 7 o'clock XYZ place, and she says yes, now there's that precedent. Now there's a precedent that she's tried, that, um, sorry, that she's agreed to something with you, that you've made some sort of plan, and that you've agreed that you like each other. And now that that precedent exists, it's much easier to, um, to proceed and to continue the action in a positive, continue the interaction in a very, very positive way and go forward, all right? And in fact, because she's already agreed to that, now there's this like commitment and consistency principle from psychology that's actually in your favor, where she has to be consistent to her previous actions. So it actually, again, works in your favor. Um, so that's, that's one good example. Here's another example of sort of overspending social currency. Uh, I had a situation where a lot of times when we travel as instructors, <clears throat> we'll stay with various people around the world. And there was a guy who I stay with sometimes in Los Angeles, who's actually a really, really cool guy, amazing guy, has a great game, I actually love staying with him. Um, but I would stayed with him a couple times, and I mean, he's really good to me. I try and be a, as good a house guest as I can, but really I'm not like providing a ton of value necessarily to, um, to, to him in particular, because he already has good game, he goes out on his own, he doesn't really need me per se, he just you know, lets us hang out because he's a really good friend of ours. And so um, I'd hung out with him a couple times, and the next time I actually needed to make plans, needed to stay in, in Los Angeles, so I, I texted him and said, hey, can I crash at your place? And he said yes, but then I ended up um, crashing with a girl instead, and so I, I just went and did that, and I actually didn't get back to him, which was pretty rude of me, because not that I didn't like care or what, I just forgot. I forgot that I'd even made that plan. And so I didn't get back to him, which was pretty rude. And then another time, a few months later, uh, he asked me for some information, and I didn't get it to him right away. Because again, I just forgot, not that like I didn't like him or I didn't care or anything. I just didn't get him the information. And so because of that, again, it sort of like destroyed this like social currency that we had. So the next time when I actually wanted to stay with him, when I, when I texted him and asked him about it, he was like, dude, uh, yeah, I guess so, but why didn't you get back to me with that information last time, right? And then why did you, you know, what, what happened last time you were supposed to stay here? And it was totally valid because the fact of the matter was we had a lot of like sort of built up social currency in terms of like he liked our company, he liked us in general, but I didn't personally have that much social currency with him because you know I didn't know him that well, I hadn't built it up and also I wasn't constantly like feeding back into it. So because of that um, I was trying to spend more currency than I had and I got a very negative reaction. So I mean pretty predictably that's what happened. Um, so those are a couple examples of what social currency is, what spending it is, what spending it isn't. Another really interesting example. How you doing, sir? Doing fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you if you can, if it's not a big deal, to like not stand in my video. Is that cool? No, okay, okay. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. I guess I have permission to do me, guys. Thanks, I appreciate that. So, um, all right, let's talk about other, other forms of social capital and how it can be spent, how it can be used, um, where it comes from, where it goes, etc. So, another great example to illustrate the point is when you're talking about um, last-minute resistance, closing, that sort of thing. Okay? Because the way I look at it, every time you're being fun you're being funny, you're being value offering, you're being self amusing, you're being yourself and just putting your personality out there, then you're actually building social capital. Every time you try and escalate, you're losing social capital or you're spending social capital, okay? So one of the highest forms of trying to escalate would be in the bedroom, would be trying to have sex with a girl. And that's why a lot of times you'll hear me talk, um, not so much on videos, but in a lot of my speeches I've talked about like sort of the point of no return with, um, with last minute resistance. The point where up to that point, 
you could call the girl up and have another date. But after that point, it might be very difficult to do so because you've pushed so far and not had sex. And so she has to wonder why you were so pushy, why you're so aggressive, whether you're gonna be like that next time, whether you're gonna make her uncomfortable next time. She also has to justify in her head all the reasons why she said no because she did say no, right? And anytime we make an action as a human being, we have to justify it to ourselves. We have to keep uh, the self-image that we have, this logical self-image to make it make sense deep down. So in that situation, if you push too far, a lot of times you're gonna get a very, very negative reaction on the back end, unless, paradoxically, unless you actually have sex with her. If you push really hard and then you have sex with her, the sex itself builds so much commitment and so much capital and so much connection between the two of you that you massively build your social capital. So again, it's the situation where the attempt to escalate, whoa, there goes my camera. It's the situation where the attempt to escalate actually destroys social capital, but then if you're successful in escalating, you create social capital. So it's very important that you be calibrated, that you understand where you're at in terms of that matrix, how much you have to spend, how much you can get away with, and that you're building it when it's appropriate or you're spending it when it's appropriate. And it is appropriate to spend it because um, you need to escalate the interaction, number one, at some point in order for it to go somewhere, it has to escalate. But number two, if you escalate it properly and you escalate it in the right moments where you actually receive acceptance to your escalation, now you actually build that social currency, right? Another great example of this is um, when you're trying to kiss a girl and trying to kiss a girl, and then your lips just accidentally brush hers a little bit and it's not even a real kiss, but then after that, she'll just kiss you willingly because you've I'm risking life, limb, and video equipment apparently to continue bringing you this video. Um, I just had a moment, I actually dropped the camera and slipped on the, I don't know, you can't see it on the ground, slipped and made an ass of myself here in public, um, but that was fun. Um, oh, so where was I? Okay, so this idea of social capital, just to sum it up again. Basically, at any point in the, re in the interaction, you've built up a certain amount of sort of belief in the other person that they can trust you, that you're fun, that you have value, that you're willing to offer value. And that essentially gives you a lot of leverage. That gives you the leverage to get away, from, away, away with things. It gives you the leverage to do what you want socially. And it gives you the leverage to try and pull strings and make things happen. But if you go beyond it, if you overspend, then you're going to end up in a situation where you basically can't go anywhere anymore. So I've said oftentimes that, that in game, in order to sleep with a girl, you need value plus comfort. Right? Very simple model. And the, the idea here is actually if you have enough comfort, typically she'll spend time with you so that you can create the value, although that's the harder way to go. Typically, more often in like hold approach game, if you have value, she'll stay with you long enough for you to build the comfort, and then that way it can work out. But the problem that you run into is if you don't have enough value and you don't have enough comfort, now you're at a social capital deficit, and now she won't see you, right? So now you have a situation where you have a girl that won't sleep with you, won't see you, and you can't talk with her to build it. As long as you have that open communication channel, you can be value offering, right? You can be value offering through text, through phone conversation, through verbal conversation, person to person. As long as you have that communication channel open, you can always build social capital by being fun, funny, self-amusing, by offering value, giving advice, giving guidance, anything that actually offers value to life, being intriguing, any of those types of things that we talk about. So you always have that channel open until it closes. That's why it's so, so, so important in pickup, in, in game, actually just in any relationship, just to keep that level of communication, that channel open, because as long as it's open, you can always rebuild the social capital, rebuild that momentum in the relationship, and capitalize from there, okay? So, what am I encouraging you guys to do? I'm encouraging you guys just to be sort of subtly aware of this concept of social capital, to realize the, the point of building it, to realize that you can't just walk in and demand something. You can't just walk in and demand compliance. You can't usually walk over to her, like say a girl's walking down the street, you can't just walk up to her and like try and make out with a random girl walking down the street. Now every once in a while, once in a blue moon that'll work, but most of the time that's too much compliance. You're asking for too much from her without having given value, without having built your social capital essentially. So you usually won't get a good response that you usually get a blatant rejection. Now, if you ever did do that and you got the yes and you got the make out, great, now you built massive social capital and you can go from there. But a higher percentage move would be to just say hi and be pleasant, get her to stop, talk, build that social capital, and then try and make out with her based on what you've built. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do in general in game. 
is recognize that you need to keep pushing forward and keep escalating. That's the, the number one beginner mistake is not to push forward, not to escalate. But recognize also that you want to do it on the right points. You want to build enough momentum, leverage, capital so that when you escalate it actually makes sense that it could work. Okay, you want to escalate in intelligent ways, not just blatantly throwing it up against the wall. And this idea of social capital um, should help you with that. Also realize that every time you push through and successfully do escalate, it massively increases your social capital. So that should hopefully motivate you to keep pushing forward, keep being a man, and keep showing you have a penis. All right, so that's the concept. I will be back tomorrow on a webinar to take any questions that you guys may have on this concept, and then also um, any questions you guys may have on game in general. So I look forward to talking to you all.